Amen. The Lord is faithful. He is gracious. He is good and he is kind. My life is being maximized as I'm taught the word. The word of God is maximizing my life. I am just going to continue just a little bit because I just want to encourage you with something and it's called faith. And so everything that we have, have accomplished in this, these years that we've been a church and uh, everything we've accomplished in our lives is simply because of faith. That's the main element is because of faith. The thing that was imprinted on my heart is that God is faithful. I don't care what comes, what goes, who says what, who does what. God is faithful. You can, you can rely on that like you can rely on when you're breathing air, that air is going to help you. God does not lie. It is impossible for him to lie. We have had so many challenges over the years because the devil is still the devil. Okay? Anybody that is expecting to live a challenge-free life, you are fooling yourself. Challenges will rise. But the good news is, is that we are overcomers, and we overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb of God. So as an overcomer, I have to use faith to overcome. Now listen to this, and I want you to hear this really well. Please, please understand what I'm about to say. Cancer is not your fight. Sickness of the disease is not your fight. Being broke ain't your fight. Hello? When things are out of order in your life, the thing that's out of order is not your fight. Got me? Because there's nothing that you could ever face in life, there's nothing that you could ever go through in life where God does not have the power to change it. So that means there is no thing that there's no answer to. The Word of God is the answer to everything, whether God is speaking, is speaking it through his written word or way he's speaking it to you right now orally. God still speaks. Amen? And so the fight is to keep my faith in what God said. Can you hear what I said? If he said, by his stripes I'm healed, stop trying to fight what the thing is doing against your body and speak the word over your body. Do you use doctors? Of course, don't be airheaded, right? Because doctors, God, God made doctors. God is the one that gave them wisdom, gave them understanding, gave them insight to what's going on in your body. So he used them, listen to me, uh, without a kidney, I would have died. Are you hear what I said? So because I got a transplanted kidney, hear what I'm saying? That's a miracle from God because he gave the doctors the wisdom to perform those miracles every day. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. You got to hear what I'm saying. To take something from somebody else's body and put it in yours and it works. See, we, we, we got to understand faith is not flaky. We don't just say anything. We don't just, in other words, if God hadn't spoken about a thing, you have no foundation to stand on. You know, I'm going to do so and so and so. Well, have you consulted God? This is what I'm going to do in my life. Have you consulted God? Come on, guys. Because faith says, what does God have to say? Should I do this or should I not do this? Faith says, what does God say? That's one thing I loved about King David. David always asked the Lord what to do. And once God speaks, then you got something to put your faith on. <laughs> if God ain't said nothing, you won't have anything to put faith on. Can you hear what I'm saying? Now, let me tell you a secret about faith. You have to become one with your word. Okay, let me, let me, let me tell you what I mean by that. You have to become your word before your word is going to act out. God is in agreement with his own word. Did you hear what I said? And that's why when he speaks, it happens. 
we as believers, as children of God, have to be in agreement with our own words. What do I mean by that? I cannot call something whole and in my mind and in my heart, I'm saying it's not. I cannot say I have provision, but in my heart, I'm saying I don't. I was just talking to a gentleman from uh, Haiti the other day. And do you know Haiti, impoverished Haiti, has the least amount of COVID cases in the world? Out of the whole nation of 11 million, they've only had 279 cases where somebody died. You know what he told me? They don't even talk about it. They don't spread the word on COVID like everywhere else. So what that mean? The people not receiving it? They don't have to believe it? So they're not receiving it. But here, this is what I'm telling you, constant talking about COVID. So you build up a, you build up a, a fear of COVID, and fear is the enemy's door. We know it's real. Don't, don't, don't be foolish. We know it's real, but don't entertain it constantly. Don't look for every update about it. You hear what I'm saying? Live your life with God as your protector. Live your life with your mind. Watch this, Apostle Paul told us what to keep our minds on. And he never said sickness. Never said any disease. Never said any poverty. Never said any lack. But he said, finally, my brother, think on these things. Then he gave a whole list of the things that we did to think on. Why? Because what you think on will shape your life. What you think on either going to help your faith or is going to mess your faith up. Come on now. You know, the things that we've gone through here as a ministry, I thank God for the people that stood with me. That were not shaken by the report. Why? Whose report do we believe? We believe the report of the Lord. And the Lord says we're more than conquerors. The Lord said we're overcomers. The Lord said by his stripes we're healed. The Lord said that Jesus took our sorrows and our griefs. So what do you say when challenges arise? What do you say when, 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 when opportunities to grieve come? What do you say? The scripture says, now see, this is this, this the power of the scripture. It says, let the weak say I'm strong. In other words, don't get in agreement with a condition that you don't want. See, in the challenges that we faced over the years with this ministry, we refused to say anything but what God said. Hallelujah. And because of that, we're still here. Amen. One of the things God would always tell you, listen to what this word says here. You got to hear me. If you only believe what he says and not count on other people, you'll see what happened. You'll see him move. But when you let all these other voices into your ears, you got to deal with that. And most voices are going to be negative. I'm going to tell you what you can't do going to tell you how you're going down, how their cousin had it, and what happened to their cousin, and all these kind of things. Nobody ever graduated from college in my family. So what? Hey Amen. You get the point? See, either you, either you believe what you say, you believe what you say you believe, or you don't. It's just as simple as that. It's simple. That's why, why, why the word says this. Uh, Joshua said, how long hold you between two opinions? Is either God is God or let Baal be God. He said, choose which one you want. 
God okay with that? Oh, y'all don't get that one. You, you missed that one? I said, God is okay with your choice. You, you, you either can believe him or believe the world. And I found believing God is better. Hey Amen. Everything ain't been smooth. Don't get me wrong. Everything ain't been smooth and hunky-dory and all that kind of stuff. Baby, I done had some fights. And I know you have too. Some of you even had heart attacks and you're still here. Other physical things that happened to you and you're still here. Scoliosis woman right here in this, was in this ministry. Uh, stand on the door was a greeter. Had scoliosis and could no longer greet until the Lord said, yeah, you can. Minister that scoliosis was her spine straightened up. So don't tell me what God can't do. Do you believe it? Can you see the faith it takes to please God? Would you look at somebody and tell them, without faith, it's impossible to please God. All God is doing is looking for somebody that will believe him. All God wants is somebody that's willing to let him demonstrate himself through. God wants somebody to let him express himself through them. Come on, guys. You hear what I'm saying? You ought to be saying, that's me. Express yourself through me, God. <laughs> Shoot. Show, show yourself strong through me. I'll let everybody see it. Some of you got testimonies that you won't tell because you don't want anybody to know you had a weakness or some other situation that only, you could, only God could deliver you from. Don't ever be embarrassed by what God does for you. See, faith says, God said it, it's done. Would you say that? God said, said it's done. done. Through my faith, faith. it's done. done. Now watch this, watch this. God, God is so awesome that your faith is not really what it takes. No, oh, y'all, come on now. Come on. Robin, it's not your faith that takes it. That just shall live by faith, but it's not your faith that's taking anything. The life we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. So my faith is in him. My faith is in what he provides, what he has done. So it's not so much my faith in the thing that's happening, it's my faith in the, in the, in the one that can do something about it. Can y'all hear that? You, you, you're trying too hard. Can, can I say that again? <laughs> you're trying too hard. You're trying to do things men tell you you got to do, even in church, in order to see God move. Let me tell you what you got to see God, what, what you have to do to see God move. Believe him. You ain't got to tithe. You ain't got to jump no rope. You ain't got to roll over like Rover. You ain't got to pray all day. Can you believe him? But you do tired. Let me make sure y'all understand that. <laughs> In other words, take you out of the equation and put your life in the hands of God. Let him order your steps because he promised if you acknowledge him in all your ways, he would direct your path. That's what he promised. So I got an issue. So in that issue, I'm going to acknowledge God. And he direct me into what I need to do. 
You hear me? God, I need a job. I need a better job than this. Come on. And he'll do it. He'll do it. I said he'll do it. You know, the enemy thought he had us here at Paris. Boy, things were going bad for a minute. And he thought he, thought he had us. I can't, I, I, can I say this? Went through a bankruptcy. Not a bankruptcy, a foreclosure. In this building. Now, when you foreclose on, you're supposed to get out. Come on, y'all guys. Come on. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all, 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 y'all. If you're foreclosed on, you're supposed to leave. And whoever foreclosed on you is supposed to take possession. Oh, y'all don't hear me. But somebody gave us this place. Y'all don't hear me. Come on, God. Somebody gave us this place in 2002. Or three, whenever it was we came in here. But he the one gave it to us. He said and gave me the vision of this place. And so during the process of building, watch this, we came over here and we wrote scriptures and decorations inside the walls. So scriptures are all in the wall declaring what God said about us in this church. So what that was, that was an act of faith. Yeah. Had it on up, people coming by to see it. We in here. Put a big old four by eight sign in front of the building. Full sale. But we, but we didn't, we did not move from what we, we didn't know. I'm talking about not just me. I'm talking about the church, us as a family. We did not move from what God had told us. People came to see it, and even three authors came. And all that offers were greater than we could do. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Come on. But faith said, you still, it's, it's yours still. So they presented it to the people, the bank or mortgage people, whoever they were. They presented those offers to those people. And guess what happened? They went with us. Now, you don't find no bank that's going to turn down no money. But by faith, and we stood on that faith, and in 2021, we still praise the Lord right here. See. You hear what I said? Now that's for somebody. Because you're facing something right now. That the enemy had told you, you got to give it up. What did God say? What was, the, what was the source of you receiving that? Baby, don't believe what they're telling you. Stand in your faith. Trust God. And watch God move on your behalf in spite of all the odds that are against you. Because, I mean, we had them stacked up. Hallelujah. God was so awesome, brothers. Listen to me. God was so awesome in this that we stayed and just paid rent. How many years we paid rent? Five years with a sign in the front for sale. <laughs> and all we did was pay rent. Then that day come, we got it done. Bam! See that lady right there? Wave your hand, Christy. That's our attorney. 
Baby, let me tell you, she went to work with us and for us, and then we found the right people, and we got it done. Yeah? Are you hear what I'm saying? God always has somebody going to use their influence and their ability on your behalf to assist you in bringing to pass in your life what is promised. What's your job? No, 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 no. What's your job? To bother God? Lord, don't look like that. What am I do? Lord, I ain't got no money to even to move. Lord, it's not good. I don't want you to move. And until you stop whining about it, I ain't going to give you no money to move. <laughs> Amen. Now, can I, can I close with this? Let me, I, I need to tell you this because... Um, today has been a good day. I am so proud of my grandson. I'm so proud of Robin and I'm so proud of, uh, what's his name? <laughs> but I am so proud. Uh, when I watch my grandson, the preacher's in him. <laughs> he started off with one thing. Let's see what that boy was preaching. Even Robin got in a little preach. What was I telling y'all? Oh, okay. This is one thing I want you to know. You ready? Don't think being a crybaby is going to move God. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. God is not moved by tears. He had compassion on you. He loves you with all his heart. He loves you. But crying doesn't move God to do anything. Can you hear me? What moves God is his word and faith in his word. You cannot speak losing and expect God to help you to win. God is not a loser. God is a winner. You know, this secular song, I like this song. I don't care what y'all say. We are the champions. That's right. I ain't going to sing it. But it goes, we are the champions, my friends. We'll keep fighting until the end. No time for losers. Come on. God is not looking for us to be losers. That's why you have to renew your mind. Would you say renew my mind? Renew my mind. I know it's what we've done, but just say renew my mind. Renew my mind. I, have to. I have to. Now, my grandson hit on something. I didn't know he was going to say, but he hit on something very powerful. You need to learn how to find a quiet place. Listen to what I said. You need to somehow find a quiet place where you can be not disturbed, where you can, no, nobody can disturb you. You don't need to talk to God. You just need to listen to him. Don't open your mouth. Just sit there in his presence, welcome his presence, and let him talk. Because God will reveal more things to you in that quiet place, in that quiet time, than you ever dream of. Again, it's that small voice. It's not the loud, clattering noise. It's that small voice that speaks to you in the quiet place. And that quiet place is where you grow. Let me try that again. In that quiet place, your faith will build. Why? Because you begin to experience God like never before. You come to the place where you know his presence because God wants to visit with you when you can pay attention to him. You're not distracted by any other thing. You just know his presence. Amen. It will change you, lickety split, to know his presence. 
It will strengthen you beyond what I'm saying. It will give you strength. It will, it, it just will, it's called dynamite. God will begin to blow up your life because you can hear. And what you hear, you can do. You can't do what you don't hear because you don't even know it exists. God is always talking to you. You need to find the quiet place. Grow your faith. It comes by hearing. Listen to what it says. It says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Not just the Bible. Not just reading the Bible. But God has a word every day. He speaks to you every day. And that's why you need to hear what he's saying so you can exercise your faith. Hallelujah. And what he's saying. Let me tell you a secret. When God talks to you in a secret place, you come out bold as a lion. You come out stronger than you ever been. I'm, I, child, I'm telling, you, I'm telling you what I know. I ain't telling you what I heard. God loves you and I do too. I praise family and I, I, our family that's not here, but viewing by live uh, service there, I want to thank God for you and I want you to know that God loves you. And the same thing applies to you. Find that secret place. If you have to go to the bathroom and lock the door. Tell them when you're in the bathroom, don't bother me. Yeah, you're using it because you're in there to pray. Get your closet. Girl, you know, that, that, what was that, that movie name where the woman had her place in her closet? Huh? Warmonger. <laughs> so it's war room. Find you some place like that. I ain't saying you got to decorate like she did, but just find you somewhere you can get and just be quiet before him. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Glory to God. You're blessed. You love Jesus. Does anybody need the salvation of the Lord today? Anybody here this morning, you never given your life to the Lord Jesus the Christ. Today is a wonderful, awesome day to do so. God loves you so much, and there is nobody can treat you the way God can treat you. There's nobody can deliver you the way God can deliver, deliver you. He is faithful to his promises. But the news is he wants you to be his. And I hate to tell you this, and I, but it's the truth, and truth is what makes you free. Everybody is not a child of God. You're God's creation, but not necessarily his child. The only way that you become God's child is to be born of his spirit. God is a spirit, not flesh and blood. God is a spirit. And to become his is a spiritual renewing, rebirthing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's when you can call God your father. Yeah. Hallelujah. But it's through the awesome price that was paid for each and every one of us through our Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. Glory to God. Can you hear me? So I encourage you this day, if you've never accepted Christ, to make that move. To make that move. We want you to message us on our Facebook pages or you can leave a comment down below of how God is moving in your life or how you just accepted Jesus. We would love to hear from you and get back with you on the awesome decision that you just made, the awesome decision in your life that you just made. Hey, before we go, make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so that you know the next time we upload. Remember, we are maximizing your life with the Word of God. We love you. We'll see you next time.